O Lord, are not thine eyes upon the truth? Thou hast stricken them, but they've not grieved. Thou hast consumed them, but they've refused to receive correction. They've made their faces harder than a rock. They have refused to return. Therefore I said, surely they are the poor. They are foolish, for they know not the way of the Lord, nor the judgment of their God. I will get me unto the great men, and will speak unto them. For they have known the way of the Lord, and the judgment of their God. But they have altogether broken the yoke, and burst the bonds. How shall I pardon you for this? Your children have forsaken me, and sworn by them that are no gods. When I fed them to the full, they then committed adultery, and assembled themselves by troops in the harlots' houses. It said in the end, They shall give heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, deceiving and being deceived. It said, The end shall not come, except there come a falling away first. And that wicked shall be revealed, whom the Lord will consume with the spirit of his mouth. But it talks about a, in the last days, that perilous times shall come. When men would be lovers of their own selves, lovers of pleasure, more than lovers of God, boastful, proud, disobedient, unthankful, unmerciful, unholy, without natural affection, haters of God, haters of those that are good. This is why Jesus said, if you were of the world, the world would love its own. But because you are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. It says, whosoever is born of God loveth him also that is begotten of him. And yet we see an institution that rises up putting to death the saints of God. When they were burning alive, the saints of God. Because of these words of eternal life, the people of the Lord. But the Lord has pronounced judgment against every false way. The Lord says, I hate every false way. A false witness shall not be unpunished. Those who seek after other gods and love flagons of wine. He said, did I not plant holy a right seed in my vineyard? What could have been done more for my vineyard that I've not done unto it? I look for grapes and yet it brought forth wild grapes. I will tell you what I will go and do to my vineyard. I will take away the hedge thereof. And it shall be trodden down. He spoke about laying the vineyard of the Lord waste. Because it brought forth wild grapes. Because there is no fruit. Trees without fruit. Whose fruit has withered. Plucked up. This is why there's no healing. This is why there's no new life that you walk in. This is why you are still lust in your heart. Sin in your heart. Jesus said he that commits sin is a slave of sin. This is why you still search after all the works of the flesh. It says the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. Adultery, fornication, idolatry, hatred, witchcraft, heresy, wrath, variance, strife, anger, maliciousness. These are the manifestations of the flesh. It says that those that are Christ have crucified the flesh with its affections and lusts. But Jesus goes further. Jesus said, he that looks on a woman to lust after her has committed adultery already with her in his heart. Jesus goes further and says, whosoever strikes you on the right cheek, turn to him the other also. Jesus goes further and he says that sin is of the heart. That's why he says nothing that comes out of a man defiles a man. Because it goes into the draft and is cast out. But that which proceeds out of the man, for out of the heart of man proceeds evil thoughts, adulteries, fornications, envyings, murders, drunkenness. All these things proceed out of the heart of man and they defile the man. You're in need of a new heart. Only provided for by Jesus Christ. You're in need of a spiritual birth. Man is born in a perilous condition as an enemy of God. As a rebel against God. 
any doctrine that is devised, that teaches a way that man can justify himself, that man can reconcile himself to God, that man by his own power can justify himself in the eyes of God, is an abomination. The Lord hates every false way. Every false way. It is only by the blood of Jesus Christ, only by His grace, that you can be redeemed, that you could find remission of sins. Like Jesus said as He took the cup and gave thanks, and He gave it to them. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. It is only through the blood of Jesus. It is only through His sacrifice being applied to your heart that you can find forgiveness of sins. If you are in Christ, if any man is in Christ, he is a new creature, all things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. If you have not been made new in heart, if you've not been redeemed from your own lusts and desires that live within you, if you've not been set free from your carnal mind, if you've not had your eyes opened to the truth of the gospel, then you are no friend of God. It says, this is the love of God, that we keep His commandments, and His commandments are not grievous. Are the commands of God grievous to you? Are you struggling? Do you still fight? Are you still struggling to justify yourself? Are His commands grievous? Because this is the love of God, that we keep His commandments. He that says, I know Him, and keeps not His commandments, is a liar. Is a liar. And you must know Him. Jesus said in John chapter 17, this is eternal life, that they might know you, the only true God, the only true God. This is not something accomplished by human means, it is not a faith of the mind, just like Paul said by the Holy Spirit. I was in you with much weakness and trembling and fear, yea, I pretended to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and Him crucified. That your faith should not rest in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Is your faith in the wisdom of men? Is your faith something you've convinced yourself of? Or have you been born of God? Have you had an experience in which the Son of God was revealed to you by the Word? Have you been born of God? Not of corruptible things, but of incorruptible, by the Word of God, which lives and abides forever. Has the Son... Jesus Christ been made known to you? Have you been liberated from your former conduct and lust? Have you been translated from the kingdom of darkness into his marvelous light? Have you been made new? Have you known the healing touch of Jesus Christ? As many as have touched him were made perfectly whole. Have you been made whole? Have you known the power of God to resurrect your dead soul? That's right, in Adam all die. It says in Romans chapter 6, By one man sin entered into the world, and death passed upon all men, for that all had sinned. Man is born dead in trespasses and sins, in need of receiving a spiritual life, which is Christ Jesus living in you. So examine your own selves, the scriptures teaches. Examine your own selves, whether you are in the faith. Do you not know this of your own selves, that Jesus Christ is in you? Does Jesus Christ live in you? Do you walk in newness of life, or do you still live consumed by your lust? Have you been made whole by the Spirit of God? If any man is in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Has this been your experience with Jesus Christ, that all old things have passed away, and that you have been made new, that you've been made whole? It says in 1 John chapter 3, Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed on us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world does not know us, because it did not know Him. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it does not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when He shall appear, we shall be like Him, for we shall see Him as He is. Further, it says, Every man that has this hope in Him purifies himself even as He is pure. Every man that does have this hope in Jesus Christ, that they shall see Him as He is. Every man that has this hope in Him purifies himself, even as He is pure. Further, it says, Whosoever transgresses the law, whosoever sins transgresses the law, for sin is a transgression of the law. 
and you know that he was revealed to take away our sin, and in him is no sin. Whosoever sins has not seen him, neither known him. Do you live in conviction by the Holy Spirit? Is your heart guided by the Holy Spirit of God? He says, when the Spirit of truth is come, he will convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Of sin because they believe not on me. Do you live in conviction for your sin? Or do you remain continuing on in your own natural lusts? Is the knowledge of God that you have that which you know naturally? Or has the truth of God been revealed to you by the Holy Spirit? Man is in need of a new birth. The way we're born is not good enough. We're born enemies in our mind. It says the carnal mind. The natural mind is at enmity against God. It says in 1 Corinthians. It is not subject unto the law of God. Nor indeed can be. So that those that are in the flesh cannot please God. But you're not in the flesh but in the spirit. If so be that the spirit of Christ lives in you. Does the spirit of Jesus Christ live in you? If any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. None of his. So if Jesus Christ does not live in you, you are not Christ's. Religion will not profit. The righteousness of man will not profit. Only the righteous blood of Jesus Christ. Only a new birth by the Spirit of God. That's what he says in Ezekiel. This is the covenant. I will have with them in those days. I will take out of them the stony heart and give unto them a heart of flesh that they may obey my commands. I will put a new spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes. This is salvation. This is the new covenant. When a new spirit comes to live within you and causes you to walk in the statutes of God. When the Holy Spirit comes to live within you. When you can say with the scriptures that it is God who works in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. When it is the power of God, the power of Christ living in you that has liberated you from your own sinful conduct. Amen. Your own lusts. But yet we lift up the power of the will of man. When in John chapter 1 it says... As many as received him, to them he gave power to become the sons of God. Even to them that believe on his name, which were born, not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. So those who have been born, not of the flesh, but of the Spirit of God,